Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a more unusual study in terms of biological studies that's actually based on a series of different experiments from China and from Japan, where researchers tried to create something a little bit more bizarre. They basically tried to give birth to mice by using two parents of the same gender. So basically, two mothers or two fathers. And, well, in the last two years, they've actually been pretty successful in the process of discovering something really important when it comes to reproduction, but also when it comes to various genetic mechanisms that can actually help us resolve many different issues in human reproduction. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but also let's start with the basics first. So in nature, in theory at least, it actually is quite possible for babies to be born entirely without father. There is going to be another video on the channel about this topic, and we've discussed some of these phenomena in some of the previous biological videos, but in essence, this idea of virgin birth or the birth of animal without any father is surprisingly common in a lot of different organisms. In biology, this is known as parthenogenesis, and it happens in many complex animals, especially when there are no partners around or when virgin birth is somehow beneficial. And it's physically possible because, in general, any egg will usually contain everything needed for birth to proceed and to basically be successful. It contains all of the cellular machinery, all of the nutrients, and can easily induce every cell type in order to produce an adult organism. But in most animals, this is not the preferred way of reproduction and is only used in some cases. Nevertheless, back in 2004, a team of Japanese researchers wanted to find out if they can actually use this to basically create a mouse by just using two biological mothers and no father. And it resulted in this. This is Tiny Kaguya. The first bimaternal mouse created in a lab that was essentially a huge breakthrough in natural fertilization and was the first time this was actually done in mammals. And here, in order to make this successful, they had to modify one of the eggs to appear similar to sperm. And so here, through a very simple genetic modification, they forced some of the eggs from one of the mothers to turn into sperm. And then by physically moving the nucleus from one of the sperm into the egg of the other mother, that's essentially how they created Kaguya. But surprisingly, even though they attempted this several times, not a lot of these mice survived. Many of them had a lot of problems, and only a few of them survived to adulthood. And to researchers behind the study, this revealed that there are a lot of different mechanisms we still don't understand, especially when it comes to embryo development. But this was 2004. It's now been 20 years, and quite a lot of new things have been discovered since then. And on top of this, in the last few years, Japan has also basically become a kind of a center for a lot of stem cell research. As a matter of fact, their stem cell research has become so advanced that there are now clinics where you can technically have a lot of things in your body repaired. What they actually do is they take one of your cells, turn them into stem cells, and then use that to improve something in your own body. I actually know someone who had a really big problem with the knee, and actually the cartilage inside the knee was almost completely destroyed, and all of this was repaired in one of these clinics within just a few months by using these new advances in stem cell research. Interestingly, something like this is practically impossible in most of the European or North American countries or would be prohibitively expensive. Yet it was relatively cheap and very convenient in one of these Japanese clinics. Anyway, moving on. And so following the experiments involving these mice, the next question was, can we actually use genetic material from two fathers and not from two mothers? By essentially using something similar. Taking some kind of a cell from the body of the father, turning the cell into the stem cell, and then combining two cells from two different fathers to create a new baby. So not just mixing two sperms, but actually turning some cells into something similar to an egg. Well, because in nature there are no natural examples of animals having two fathers, this was a super intriguing question. And that's because compared to a typical egg, that's in some sense a jack of all trades and can do everything really well, sperm is extremely specialized. Here's, for example, one of the recent studies from 2025 that focuses on specialization of a typical sperm cell and explaining how unique it is compared to other cells in our body. And so using sperms from two different fathers would just not work. You can use one sperm, but the other cell still has to be an egg. And while, as I mentioned, Japanese researchers have gotten really good at doing this. In biology, these are known as IPS cells or induced pluripotent stem cells. And in the last couple of decades, there's been a lot of research on how to basically turn almost any cell in your body into a stem cell. For example, you can literally take a piece of your skin, place it in certain conditions involving certain chemicals, and those cells will then become stem cells that can then be raised, they can be fed, 
and they can technically become anything you want them to become. And so yeah, just like someone I know, you can inject them into your knee and they'll become cartilage, or you can place them in a certain environment to turn them into eggs. And so here they took two fathers, they took a sperm from one of the fathers, they then took a sample from the other father, turned it into one of these stem cells, which then became an egg, and the sperm then fertilized the egg. And this was successfully achieved in March of 2023. It was reported in this study. And so the biggest achievement in this case was basically the creation of the so-called oocytes, which is a different way of calling some kind of an egg cell or immature ovum, that could then be fertilized and turned into an actual organism. And here they were able to create seven individual mice with two biological fathers, but there were still a lot of failures. As a matter of fact, the survival rate in this case was super low. There were 630 transferred embryos, and only seven of them became living mice. Which suggests that there is still something we don't really understand about this process, and there are still some unknown mechanisms. Although here the failure could also be due to the process involved in creating these cells. For example, in order to create a successful egg, these stem cells had to be grown in a very certain environment until some of them spontaneously lost their Y chromosome. These cells were then collected and treated with additional chemicals, specifically a compound called reversine. Reversine is a very small molecule used in stem cell research, and sometimes it can promote certain errors. And even though here they were only looking for cells involving X chromosome, it's quite possible that some of these eggs were already damaged, with the X chromosome potentially not being complete. And so here the success rate is relatively small, approximately 1.3%. But the biggest problem is what's known as epigenetics, or basically influence of the environment and various behavioral factors that can alter gene activity without affecting DNA itself. And so because in this case the eggs were raised in very specific chemical conditions, it's quite possible that during formation of these eggs, the environment itself caused most of the damage. But now just a few days ago from when I'm making this video, there's another study, this time from China, and this time doing something similar but a little bit different. Adult by paternal offspring generated through direct modification of imprinted genes in mammals. A new attempt to create mice with two fathers by once again using stem cells from one male, a sperm from the other male, and a female surrogate. But in this case, in this study, scientists have also identified certain genetic mechanisms that potentially explain failure in the previous study and actually take us just a little bit closer to be more successful at this somewhat bizarre but possibly somewhat important artificial fertilization. Now normally, when a male sperm fertilizes a female egg, we end up with double the genes, which means that half of these genes need to be silenced. But if the material comes from two fathers, or even two sperms, in some sense this can actually result in double silencing, or basically a cancellation of both copies of the gene, which can actually produce major disorders, and that's sort of what happened in the previous study and actually previous attempts at artificial fertilization, where the majority of eggs were developed with various serious issues. In biology this is referred to as imprinting abnormality. And so this genomic imprinting is also very important. And so this genomic imprinting is usually really difficult to control and can basically destroy embryo before it's even developed. But in this study they actually discovered a way to control at least 20 of these different mechanisms, correcting 20 different abnormalities, by using a series of different genetic techniques, and specifically by editing, deleting, inserting, or moving around genetic base pairs. In this particular study, scientists achieved a fully developed adult animals with a much, much higher success than before. Instead of just 1.3%, this time they had 13%. 13% of mice survived and became adults. And once again mice whose DNA came from two separate fathers. And the evidence from the study basically suggests that the main barriers for most of this artificial reproduction seems to be in this genomic imprinting. Which I guess raises a really intriguing question. In a lot of other animals, unisexual reproduction, especially when it comes to mothers, seems to be relatively common. Not so much in mammals. For some reason, in mammals, there seems to be a major barrier to unisexual reproduction, and this barrier seems to be mostly genetic. So basically having two mothers or two fathers for some reason doesn't seem to work as well. But as the study showed, there is a way to control some of this, and eventually there might be a way to control all of this, resulting in healthy animals. But there's also a really important side note for this study compared to the one in Japan. The Japanese mice that were raised without these genetic modifications, even though only 1.3% survived, were also fertile. They could have their own babies. 
These mice, though, even though more of them survived, all of them were sterile. They could not reproduce. And exactly why, obviously, is currently unknown. Here's actually why on these cute little guys. But having covered all of this, there is still one obvious unanswered question. Why do all of this? What benefit is there in creating animals whose genes came from the same sex? And can this actually help us with anything? Well, the obvious first assumption is that this might allow same-sex couples to have their own biological children. But because of regulations, that's unlikely to happen anytime soon, if ever. And so instead, let's discuss the more obvious benefit. By discovering specific genetic components that drive embryo development, researchers behind these studies believe they'll be able to discover important cures and important solutions to a lot of different fertilization disorders, including what's known as Turner's syndrome, a sex chromosomal condition where women usually lack part of their X chromosome and are unable to reproduce. Here, though, they actually discover techniques where this X chromosome can be restored, thus allowing these women to have their own eggs that can then be fertilized and allow these women to have kids. That's obviously just one of the examples. And so here there are a lot of potential solutions to various forms of infertility, with maybe one small caveat. This is in mice. As in all of this so far has been done in mice and nothing more complex. And one of the main differences between embryo development in mice and in, say, humans is, of course, time. Human cells require much longer to develop and very likely have much more complex genetic processes, which means that trying to recreate something similar in a human cell would be extremely, extremely difficult. As a matter of fact, when it comes to culturing these stem cells and producing eggs from some kind of a stem cell, because in human cells this would require more time, there's a much higher chance for some kind of a genetic and epigenetic abnormality, and thus a much higher chance of failure. And that means that even here, even though there might be some lessons to learn, it will probably take decades before all of these lessons can actually be applied to humans. Either way though, I personally find this research really fascinating, especially because of the advances in stem cell research that comes out of Japan pretty much every year now, and as I mentioned, because of the amount of different medical procedures they have now, where stem cells are physically used to help people with things that would be otherwise impossible to do. And so yeah, in terms of medical fields, this is a really important discovery and really important research, especially for people who just cannot have kids. And so the research that started back in 2004 with this little girl has now reached a new high. Tiny mice from two fathers. But I guess for now that's all I wanted to mention. Once there are some additional discoveries, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.